Another way to solve radical equations is using our rational exponents. So let's go through a few examples of how we can do that. A property we want to use is our power to a power rule, which said if we have our variable to a power and then we raise it to another power, we multiply them. Now, what we want to do here is choose a value such that our exponents will cancel out. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit. I have m to the 5 fourths. In fact, let me go ahead and write this like 5 over 4 and then equals 32. Now, we need to hold our property that when solving equations, whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other side. So that still holds true. Now what we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to an exponent. And that exponent is going to depend on that rational exponent that we're starting with. So if I come to the side here and I have 5 fourths, what I'm thinking of is I want to multiply with a value such that I just get a positive 1 out. I want to end up with an exponent of positive 1 because that makes things a lot simpler. And to do that, what we need is to multiply by the reciprocal. We want to flip the fraction so that it all cancels out. That would be 20 divided by 20, which is equal to 1, which is exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do here is where I have m to the 5 fourths, and look at that 5 fourths and say, I want to raise that to an exponent of 4 fifths using the reciprocal. So that when I use that power to a power rule, that's really just m to the 5 fourths times 4 fifths. Then on the other side of the equation, we have to raise it to the same exponent, so 4 fifths. So what we're doing over there is we're taking the fifth root of 32 and we're going to raise that to the fourth power. So on the left hand side, we would just have m and then equals, well, the fifth root of 32 is 2. Raise that to the fourth power for 4 times 4, which is 16. And then we're going to go our same route of checking our answer. So we would check. So 16 to the 5 fourths. Well, that would be the fourth through to 16 to the fifth power, which is 2 to the fifth, which is 32. And we're all good there. Okay, let's do another one. So, a few ways to go about this. But let's just jump right to putting in the exponent that we need. So I have x to the negative 3 halves, and then 1 over 512. I'm going to raise both sides to an exponent. Now this time I have a negative, and we do want a result of positive 1. So that means the exponent I choose will also be negative. And then where I have 3 halves, now I'm going to do two-thirds. So with that x to the negative three-halves times negative two-thirds will give me x to the positive one. And then on the other side of the equation, I'm raising this to the negative two-thirds. And what I could do is to take care of that negative is flip the fraction. So where it's 1 over 512, now it'll be 512 over 1, raised to the positive two-thirds. And let's see, that would be the third root of 512, and then squaring all of that. And let's see what we would get for a cube root of 512. That should be 8. So this is 8 squared, which is 64. And we could go and check our answer by plugging into a calculator 64 raised to the negative 3 halves power and we should see that 1 over 512. In fact, let's do those steps in the Desmos Scientific Calculator so you can see all those pieces. So I'm going x to the negative 3 halves, but we're plugging in 64. So I'm going to have my exponent 
negative 3 divided by 2. And it's giving me a, a decimal here. So to change it to a fraction, what I can do is convert to fraction. And there's my 1 over 512. So that convert to fraction um, button can be very helpful over there. OK, a few more examples here. So something that has been happening with these already that we haven't had to really do the work for ourselves first is that we have our exponential piece isolated on one side of the equation. So this time I have the p to the negative 3 halves, but I have this plus 2. What I want to do is subtract 2 away from both sides so that I have p to the negative 3 halves all alone on one side. Because when I go and raise it to an exponent, I need it to be nice and simple over there. Okay, 19 ninths, 19 ninths minus 2, so that would be 18 ninths. So that'll be a 1 ninth left over there. All right, then the exponent will need to be negative so that it multiplies to a positive, And then flip for a 2 thirds. So we have a negative 2 thirds here. And that will give us just p on the left-hand side. And then over here, we'll have a positive 9 to the positive 2 thirds. By flipping the fraction, we get rid of that negative. And if I try to take the cube root first of 9, I'm going to get stuck. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and square 9. So I'm going to think about the cube root of 9 squared, which is 81. And I'm just going to do a quick breakdown. So that's 9 times 9, which is 3 times 3, 3 times 3. So I can make a threesome of 3s. So let's go ahead and simplify that down with a p, extract a 3, and then we'll have the cube root of and a 3 left over. Let's look at plugging that into the calculator. So I actually find plugging in these rational exponents a little easier than, what am I trying to say? There are options for like plugging in the cube root. Let me just kind of show you, it's a bit complicated, but I'll show you how I would plug this in. So all for P, I would have three times the cube root of three. I'm gonna go ahead and write that as three to the one third power. So there's my value for P, and then we're raising that to the negative three halves. So that is up to the negative, yep, negative 3 halves power. And then we're going plus 2 for a 2.1111, which is same as 19 ninths. So we're all good there. But I just find at least typing on the keyboard that going ahead with the rational exponents it's easier for me if you like using the cube root button. What you do is just three, and then you can grab that button, and then you would just type in the three there and the three there, and it will get you just the same. So, okay, last one here. So we have our exponential piece all isolated. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and raise that, and it'll be a positive three halves, positive three halves. So similar to up above, I'm going to go, actually, never mind. This is the square root of 9, and that's going to be cubed equals x minus 12. So that is going to be 3 cubed, which is 27, equals x minus 12. Add 12 to both sides for a 39. There we go. So that's how we can solve using our rational exponents. Just comes down to raising both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power.